Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And in Jesus' name, we declare that the Bible is what? God speaking to who? Me. And they are what? Life to those who what? Find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Amen. So our flesh is going to have some healing today. Amen. Our spirits are going to have some healing today. And today is Father's Day, so uh, here we are, being religious, going to talk about Father's Day. <laughs> but, but I think it's important, especially for these young ladies over here uh, that are not married, to, uh, how do you pick out a husband? Uh, how do you become a father? Anybody can have sex. That doesn't make them a father. Right. You know, there's a lot of uh, kids that have no fathers. Yep. Uh, we've got places on the reservation that 85% of the homes don't have a father in it. Mm -hmm. And this is here in our own country. And so people don't understand the responsibility. Being a father is an ordained position of God. Amen. It's like calling an apostle. It's your, a father is a, and a mother, mother, is also an ordained position of the Lord. And see, if you haven't had children yet, <laughs> Fernando, we need to meet, find out what men are. What, what are they supposed to be? You know, and I remember when I was growing up, my, my older brothers, remember there was eight of us, one, one girl, and the older brothers Men don't cry, Albert. How come Jesus cried? All the prophets cried. So that was taken away from us. That was the worst thing men can say to their children, is don't cry. Why? Cry is the second word for deliverance. And, and see, women get delivered so much easier than men because they cry. <laughs> And, and we, we were told, don't cry, you're a man, you know. Just put up with it and slap you. It gets stronger. And so, how do we become men? Who, my dad was the provider. He worked two jobs. The whole time we were back east, till I was 14 years old, I very seldom ever saw my dad. And when we went fishing or picking berries, uh, he took us to a spot and he went his way and He'd come back and get us when he was done. And, you know, I was so bitter towards my dad uh, because I felt like he just taught me how to fish. He got me a cut a branch, tied a tight string around it, and said, this is how, put, how to do a hook and a worm. He was gone all day, and it's just Paul and I all by myself. And I was upset with him. And then I realized I had to repent from that. And my dad, he, he spoke English and French. He'd be talking to you in two different languages. And I was embarrassed. And I've had to repent from that. If it wasn't for my dad, you wouldn't have this pastor that you have today. Do you realize, what if God showed us right now how many people have been saved through this ministry and filled with the Holy Spirit over 49 years of ministry? I still have people, remember Barbara when we were in the homes, I remember we had, people got healed like you can't imagine get healed. One time we raised this guy basically from the dead, and the next night we're at, uh, Bar we were using Barbara's home, then we were just home ministry, and this gal that was there at the hospital, she called me, and I, I said, uh, would you please leave the room right now, I can only have faith people in here right now, because this man is brain dead or whatever it was. And uh, she says, oh, I'm a believer. They're friends of mine. Oh, okay. They were good Methodist people. And so uh, that next night, I get a call. She says, can I bring my son to your Bible study? He has an incurable lung disease. I said, yeah. Guess who got healed that night? I get a call a week later, the doctors can't find a thing wrong with him. The hole he had in his chest is not there anymore. Hallelujah. And see, and, and I've looked back, and some of you say, why do you keep telling us this stuff that you did it in the past? Well, we're having miracles all the time. You, 
You know, and Paul Hunter taught me this, Pastor Paul Hunter, one of my mentors. Al, if you don't see the little things God's doing, you'll never see the big things. Right. And so start realizing, like at the memorial service yesterday, the cross. Yeah. How, how, how on earth, this isn't the one, but how would I even think of that? And another thing that came to me yesterday was, uh, we were talking and I said something about my brother that saw heaven. I didn't know we had some people here that didn't, weren't saved, but they don't like going to funerals because they always get hammered about hell. And so I, I shared with my brother who became an atheist, and just before he dies, uh, Barbara and I go to the hospital, remember that, honey? And they threw us out because he just had a steps put in and that you can't move for six hours. That's what they told me I was supposed to go through too. But that didn't happen. And so he's laying there and he said, Doobie, come here. He always called me Doobie. And, and I go down, get closer. He says, are you still a Christian? <laughs> Remember Barb? And I says, yeah, probably better than the last time you saw me. He says, I repented all night. And before he died, called me twice that week, said, Al, now remember, nobody knows what heaven looks like. Even Paul the Apostle, so these people that write books that have been there and back, don't believe it. And guess what he said? He said, Al, heaven is beautiful. He never talked about a building. He never talked about angels. He just said, Al, heaven is beautiful. He saw it twice. God showed him heaven twice. He called his family together and says, I'm not going to the doctors anymore. I'm going home and died. He, he said goodbye to all of them right there. That same night he went home to be with the Lord. Right. An atheist to back to Christianity. And I was dealing with somebody yesterday. We had a couple in here that become atheists. And, you know, when you read the Old Testament, you wonder what God really is like. Because he kills everybody. But guess what? They're going to hell anyway. And so when you think about it, he's getting rid of, like, what, how do you get rid of a cancer in your body? You've got to take out the bad part. He, kept, he did the Old Testament to prove to us, number one, you cannot legislate morals. Amen. Amen. And people that vote for morals, they have they don't know the Bible. Man will do what man wants to do. Amen. You can't stop abortion. You can't stop alcoholism. You want to get rid of the biggest killer? Get rid of liquor. We tried that. What happened? My uncle from way back there, I remember we're driving in Canada. He's from Canada. And we, we went by this lake that was a mile and a half long. And my dad says, you see this lake? This is how rich my uncle became. Uh, he just gave that to his son for his Christmas wedding, for his uh, wedding present. A lake, a mile and a half lake. He gives it, that's how rich he came, became from us. My dad said they had all the, uh, the border patrol. Uh, he even drove horse buggies loaded with liquor and they just waved him on. <laughs> And so we tried and see what we need right now, men. You know, that scripture I'm using, where's the mighty men? That's actually talking about coming against Jerusalem. But I'm, I'm, using, I'm taking it out of context. And I'm saying it, where are the men? Paul, uh, let me read that to you. You know me in notes. I have a hard time with my notes. In chapter 4, go to chapter 4. This is probably in your notes someplace. In verse 14, chapter 4, 1 Corinthians. Lord Jesus, just bless, Lord, we want to become men. Amen. You know, uh, you know, we can pray for, uh, I make so many mistakes as a husband. And, and for now, no, I know you're, you, you're probably the new, you two are the newest couple here married, and then Eli and Rosie. And, uh, you know, I love the statistics that Dave gave on that Wednesday night. If you haven't heard it, I'm telling you, you need to get that message. And uh, what, what we need in manhood, 
is is we need uh, what do you call that? Uh, a wife. <laughs> yeah, a wife like mine. Amen. She's not afraid to tell me what's wrong. Absolutely. And but you know, you know when we prove each other is when we're sick. And those of you that don't believe in getting sick and you're married, you're really going to get cheated. Because I found out how much my wife really loves me. Here we, I am the first time in the shower. And, and I mean, I can't even bend this far over, right? And I, all of a sudden I notice she's fully closed. She's in the shower washing me. And, 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 and you know, and Barbara says, I'm soaked. And so I go wobbling back out, and she's so afraid I'm going to slip, but I couldn't do anything for about three days. Then, then after that, I, I was okay. She said, don't worry about your feet. The water will take care of that. But, but she was afraid I was going to fall. And, and, and those, those experiences that we have as men, and, and I remember my dad. My dad, boy, when my mom was sick, man, he did the cooking, he did everything. But other than that, you'd never know that we were married. And so something happens in sickness. You find out how much somebody really loves you. And uh, I, I just, listen to what Paul says, verse 14, First uh, Corinthians 4.14. I do not want these things to shame you. And I, I, I don't want to beat men over the head. You know what? We get beat over the head all the time. The commercials. Look at the commercials that knock us. But as my beloved children, I warn you, for though you have 10,000 instructors or teachers in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. And this word here, uh, instructors, is, it was the slave boys that took the kids to school and made sure the kids honored. And that's what he's saying we have for teachers today, is, is boys. Uh, you know, we, we, need, we need to grow up in the kingdom. And it says, don't let a novice be an elder. Why do you think it says that? You can be 60 years old and been saved all your life and still be a novice and not know anything about the Bible. And that's why I'm so sold on discipleship, because he never asked us to make converts. He told us to make disciples. And the last bad statistic I, I heard, 93% of the body of Christ never reads the Bible, only in an emergency. And you even go to the church and it's up on the wall so you don't have to learn how to use your, your, your Bible. And I, I just, I, 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 I'm fighting that because I want you to learn how to use your Bible. This is a sword. I have real swords in my home. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't hand it to you because if you don't know how to handle it, you're going you're gonna to cut yourself. Well, how many of us know how to use this sword? To divide us up. Look what it do. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And what does it do? Divides the soul and the spirit. The marrow and the bones. What's the marrow? Inside the bone. It, 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 it can even reach to that. And intense and thought of the heart. That's Hebrews 4.13 or 12. And so that's what we have. We have a sword. And I've been saying, and I left it out this week because it's Father's Day, but each one of us has a gift. And how do we practice that gift? I, I remember uh, when I was in martial arts and I first started, and I remember when I was an instructor and these guys would come in, uh, especially muscle-bound guys, and I, I was terrible with them. And uh, I would let them hit me because, you know, I have a secret way of doing it where they can, they're not going to hurt me. And I say, that's all you learned, that's all you got, with all those muscles, and you can't hurt me? And, and, but why? It takes six months, six months to learn how to throw a punch. Wouldn't you say, Rick? Effectively, it takes six months 
to get your body involved. Well, it takes years to get this down. People think, well, I went to church uh, two years ago, or I spoke in tongues 40 years ago. Look at the years you've robbed yourself of tongues. And is, is, your, is your pastor a boy, or is he a man? Is your mentor a boy, or is he a man? And see, I've, I, I fight that one constantly. And, and, and if you want to know how bad of a, I am, just ask my wife, she'll tell you. I'm learning. We're in a, I have it in here someplace. We're, we're, we're something in a progress. How do you say that? A work in progress. We're, we're a work in progress. And I knew Barbara before I married her. She was a member of the church. And, and do we really know one another? Uh, we call it love. I don't care, uh, you guys, how much you love your wife. It gets better all the time. They don't believe it. <laughs> oh, see, see, they, they, you guys know what I'm talking about. They don't believe, but we do. There's, there's something about your wife that's incredible. And she's the only one that does things to me the way she does. And, but, but it's because of the love. It's real. And there's times in your marriages where you, there's going to be uppers and there's going to be lowers. It, and, and people, we're not going to use that in our wedding for better or for worse. Sometimes, trust me, it's worse. But that's when you grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When I went through this surgery, you guys, you have no idea what that did for me. And it was the hardest thing I've ever been through. And I've been through a lot. And, you know, my life has been, I was hung once till I was dead. I know what life can be. And I want to tell you, that was the worst thing I've ever experienced. But I have a feeling now that I never had before. One of the first things I did was call my brother and one of my brothers and apologized. I never realized what open heart surgery was like. Until, you, until you've done something, don't knock it. You know, I'm here only by the grace of God right now. And Barbara was there when the, the doctor said, Al, if you would have had a heart attack, you would have never made it. That's how bad I was. But we knew. I told Barbara, you, you got to get me to the hospital. I'm dying. Was I afraid to die? Not at all. That, that was been a benefit. The way I felt, who cares? And and but I really have, n have had no pain. I mean, it bothers me, but I haven't had any pain. Uh, they don't even give you uh, pain pills when you leave the hospital anymore. You know, before they give you bottles of stuff. <laughs> but I haven't needed it. I, you know, I get a headache, I take Tylenol. And, and so, growing up is hard, you guys. Even at our age, it's hard to grow up. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, God wants us men to rise up. And this, these, what if, what if they, I didn't know this, because I don't listen to these guys. Just like uh, Charles has sent me some of these prophets, and I just... I knew we were in trouble because they're all liars. And, and uh, nobody knows when the Lord is coming. Amen. Don't buy anything that says he's coming. You, he could come right now. Do we know? No. If Jesus doesn't know, that guy that's on that internet doesn't know either. But it sure builds business and sure gets people in your church. It, it, if you see, if I get you scared, then I got to keep you scared. If I, if we, if we, if we're run by music, I always have to have music where we're jumping up and down. And I have churches will brag that they didn't even have time to preach; they just praised the Lord the whole time. That means nobody got delivered, nobody got healed. Music. Well, it will not heal you. No. It, what does it do? It, rela it, it sets you ready to receive the word. Right. And, and 
you, and you shall know the truth. If you're singing the word, that's different. Psalms, you know, they sang Psalms. Mm -hmm. They didn't read it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying all this, man, because all of us have to improve. And that means you two women. That's right. All of us have to improve. Amen. Right now, uh, the world is in a mess. I don't know if, if I know, if especially Christians, they don't listen to news because it's all lies. Boy, that's a trick of the devil. And to let us make sure we don't know what's going on. And Canada has just closed the border. That's how bad the COVID is right now. And right now, even with my double shot, it's only good for 75% from this from India. That's why we're, you guys are wearing a mask. Not because I hate you. Not because I'm testing you. It's because I'm a pastor. And I love you so much that I, I'll wear a mask. And, and I, that's what I, what, how I want you to feel. You know, when I go to Bannard for my treatments, everybody in there has a mask. They don't see, you know, I work out for an hour and get better at it. My heart rate got over 100 this week. Bam. I remember I used to get up to about 155, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> Yet do you not have many fathers? For in Jesus Christ I have begotten you. How? Through the gospel. My job is to get you through the gospel, the good news. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. And that our scripture for today is, Be alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. And I've talked to so many men. It's funny when, when you talk to, to men and you ask them uh, about their childhood. We have to be careful how we judge people because... A lot of men did not have a good childhood. And, uh, uh, and, and, and when mother raises you only, there's a part that's missing in your life. Yeah. It's husband and wife. The two became one. And I used to do weddings like this. I would take a piece of paper. See, Adam was complete. But isn't it funny he couldn't have any children? God made him complete. He was in God's image. Remember, I think chapter 4 says he has a son in his own image. It changed after the sin. Now we're made in Adam's image. Mm -hmm. Our spirit, when you get born again, is in the image, but not our bodies. And so I would take a piece of paper and rip it right in the, right in the mic so they could hear it. <laughs> now, 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 Barbara has what I don't have, but I have what she doesn't have. That's why marriage is between a man and a woman. And when you put them together, you have a complete man. And you know, even if you love each other, even if you're a Christian, marriage is hard, Barb. Is it hard? Oh. <laughs> Come on. And I'm not knocking anybody, but you're two different kinds of people. You never marry you. You always marry somebody different than you. Yeah. Amen. Opposite attracts, at least that's what I was told. Uh, I'm the talker. Sometimes Barbara says, do you have to talk so much? See, she... I, I and, and, and you know I always teach men our you biggest want problem. To be up there talking about <laughs> you want to be up here and take over, honey? <laughs> and, and, and Eli, I've you know I've taught that and, and about how men don't listen. Yeah. And and that's why they said thirty five thousand people would not die a year if all the doctors were women. That's scary. I had to be almost beg two doctors. They would not believe I was having a heart. I was going to die. Barbara, you were there. Yes. They, they, 
You, all your tests came back good. You, you, you do not have heart problems. I remember I, this went on before, and one doctor told me, just drink more water. I said, doctor, I am dying. You need, I need to go to the heart specialist. Well, I had to force him to do it, didn't I, honey? Yeah, that didn't help. And that didn't help. I went to the heart doctor. He says, Al, we just checked you six months ago. Your heart's perfect. You've got a, like a 40-year... I says, doctor, I have a heart problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I finally said, when I'm working out, I'm having a hard time getting through. What did you just say? I'm having a hard time getting... Well, there is one test, but the insurance doesn't cover it. And I thought, oh my God. One test. I wonder how what that's going to cost us. I don't care. I'm getting it. How much was that test, doctor? Seventy-one bucks to save my life. Seventy-one dollars. It's called calcium scan, and they saw I was all plugged up. So sometimes you even have to fight to live because I was promised I was going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Now, some faith people would be mad that I even went to the doctor. You should have believed God. We should tell these guys, all these ministers that just died over these last couple of years, because they wouldn't take any medicine. Look at how many of the flock has died, because the blood of Jesus was going to cover them. In case you, you ought to check out that word. The blood of Jesus was to heal us from our sins. So be careful what we're saying. We've heard a lot of people. When you're young, it's real easy to say, Oh, glory to God, you know, I'm never going to be sick. I always say, let's go check your medicine cabinet. We're, we're in a body, in a worldly body, a fallen na nation. The only thing that's pure in me is my spirit. And if I want to live, I'm going to have to trust God. Amen. And when my day has come, I'm gone, baby. And nothing I can do about it. I take vitamins, I'm real health nut. I'm still going to die. It's appointed unto man once to die. The Lord doesn't come, and I don't know when he's coming. According to these, all these guys that know everything, he's coming this year. Well, I hope they're right. I just, I just haven't heard anything. All I am hearing is, uh, are you ready, Al? I urge you, therefore I urge you to imitate me. And think about this, as a father. It's so important as a father that you love on you, that they see you loving your wife. That is so important. Uh, if I can pick on Terry... I remember when Terry first came to our church, none of you are going to believe this, but I was there. She didn't even smile, let alone hug. Is that true, Terry? Does that embarrass you that I said that? No, it's true. That's the truth. And, and, and there's some of you that, you know, I can tell when people don't want to be hugged, they freeze up. And so I always tell people, I've had people say, I, I'm not coming to your church because you guys hug well, imagine what that does to a marriage. At least shake hands once in a while. Hold hands. <laughs> Amen. And I, I wrote something down here that I, I, I did a, a while back. Uh, in in uh, Where did I put it? How, how, how do we act like men? Who's mentoring us? Because the disciple of, we've got to become disciples of Jesus Christ. And there's many scriptures here. Read Proverbs each day. That's one of the uh, biggies. I learned that from Ed Cole years and years ago. Uh, read the proverb of the day. I haven't had a chance to this morning because I had to text everybody uh, Happy Father's Day today and, uh, and get ready for us. But today I'd read, isn't it the 20th? You read, read the 20th. You'd be amazed what, uh, what, what you get out of that. It takes nine minutes to read the proverb. If you could donate nine minutes a day, that could help you. Because it, it covers every subject imaginable. 
But in that nine minutes, you've got to be really paying attention. You know, I've heard, I, you know, you can read three chapters and not even know what you said or what you read. I, I put in here, read Proverbs each day. Who do we act? How do we act like fathers? What example did our dads, brothers, relatives, pastors, teachers give us? We just quoted that scripture. It's also in chapter 4. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate or follow me. I'm supposed to be able to say to you, follow me like I follow Christ. If I'm not following Christ, why are you here? And that's what people all wake up. We found out how many, how much sin was in the camp in, in 2000. Dave really brought that out. And a lot of people have been uh, lost their job as pastor, prophet, and all that. Because we've got to be the example. And I put in that scripture in Acts 20, a lot of this I added to what, what you already have. Acts 20, 28. Now watch what it says. Take care of yourself first, and then the flock. That is, it, let's just say, uh, if you're an alcoholic, you can't even take care of yourself, let alone your family. So before you want them to take care of your family, you've got to take care of yourself. And, and I want to read a scripture that finally, after all these years, and I think I shared it last year, God gave me this scripture. I wish I would have put it in there for you. In the 23rd chapter, go there. 23rd chapter of Matthew. Boy, and... The Lord really nails them here. <laughs> he calls them blind guys, guides, woe to you. You know, and he just nails them in this. Who is he nailing? The religious people. He, he never nails the, the, the common people, but he always does the leaders. Notice what he says, therefore, verse 3. What's it there for? Everything he just read. Whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not. In other words, and you, any, anything I could use right now. Okay, wear a mask. The government, they're saying to wear a mask. So the child says, Dad, how come you're not wearing a mask? Do as I say, not as I do. If you're swearing, they can swear. If you're cheating on your wife, they're going to cheat on their wife. If you beat your wife, your son will beat his wife. Why? That's what you taught him. And so we got to go back, go back to our childhood, where, whatever it is, and find out, where did I miss it? You know, I've had so many men say to me, my dad was so cruel to me, he wanted to make a man out of me. You want to make a man out of me? Follow Jesus. You'll find out what a real man is. Huh? You really will. We have a long ways to go, don't we? <laughs> Anybody get anything? Amen. Is it okay for women today? Amen. I want her, both sides of the fence to be blessed. Amen. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Anyway, when God made Adam and Eve, it started back then. Remember, God spoke to the man, never spoke to the woman. And so... That, that's what we got to remember. And yet, in, in Timothy, it says, Adam sinned. Not the woman. She was deceived. So we have to be careful. The woman is more... Uh, she, she convinced him. 
Adam to eat. He was there the whole time. All he had to do is say, no, honey, God said. No. He was manipulated right into it. What our problem, man, is ego. And it is a problem. If you don't think you have it, you're lying to yourself. If women, you don't think you're manipulators, you're lying to yourself. And so what do we do? We, we, we both can do both. We all can do both. We've got to work on that. And, and we, we just got to stay in what God wants us to do. It's, it, he tells us to tend. That means to work. He tells us to keep. That means to hedge around. A father is one who stands in a father's place and looks after another in a parental way. A title of honor. He is to nourish, protect, uphold. That's what the vine says. And Barnes wrote on where Paul said, imitate me. Barnes said, I make Christ my example. He is my model in all things. And if you follow him, and follow me as far as I follow him, just as far as I follow Christ, you will not err. This is the only safe example. And if we follow this, we will never go astray. Praise God. Never go astray. So love desires to benefit others as the, as the expense of self because love desires to give. Lust desires to benefit self at the expense of others, because lust desires to give. And I, I gave a bunch of these. Ed Cole said that, that to guard, guard, guide, guard, and govern. And that's what as men we're supposed to do. And so it's up to us to ask the Lord to help us to be fathers. It's up to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I believe it's time uh, for the, uh, that scripture that I use in Joel. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war come near. Let them come up. In Romans, I mean in Revelations chapter 3a, it says the doors open. And in chapter 4, verse 1, what did, what did he say? Come up here. And always remember in Romans 3.10, because people right away, they start feeling bad. Well, I should have done this. I could have done this. I should have done this. And not one righteous. No, not one. We're all a work in progress. We're all going to fail at one time or another. But in that failing is when you learn. In that sickness is when you learn. <coughs> Sometimes you even have to get fired to get a better job. Yeah. Amen. It's true. Yeah. And, and, and right away we blame God, we're mad at everybody, and, and come to find out <coughs> it was a blessing. <laughs> and so when you trust God with all your heart, lean not on your own... As, as, uh, Judy would say, lean not on your own stinking thinking. Exactly. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and what? He'll direct your path. So Lord, I'm asking you to acknowledge these men, those that are listening, those that are here today, Lord, that, that we're going to become better men Amen. for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys, just oh, guys, just stand up. That, if you're a father, stand up. It's going to be two, three. Two. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Three. Only three? <laughs> Come on. What well, you're going to be fa the, the fathers to be. Stand up. Fathers to be. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There you go. Come on, ladies. Stick your hand out there. We, we want to bless you and walk in your authority. As a man of God, 
Lord, we just bless them right now and let your anointing flow through them and let them become these men of war that you're calling up right now, which I would call the sons of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, bless you today for being here and receiving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.